Hi, I am Dr. Arsalan Khan and, and today we are going to study the phylum Echinodermata. Common examples of phylum Echinodermata are starfish, sea urchin, sea cucumber, sea lilies, brittle star and the sea star Cryptosternia. The word Echinodermata is derived from Greek language and it is composed of two words, the Echino and Derma. The Echino means spiny and Derma means skin. Animals or members of the phylum Echinodermata have spiny skins and these spines basically form the skeleton of these animals. And this skeleton is composed of calcium carbonate. So, their skeleton is also called as calcareous skeleton. Next is their habitat. All the members of the phylum Echinodermata are marine. So, they are called as exclusively marine because it is composed of three layers. They are called as triploblastic. The outer layer is called epidermis. The middle layer is called dermis. And the inner layer of the Echinoderms is called peritoneum. These are silomate, true silomate having body cavity or free space in the body. These are all free living. There is no parasitic member in the Echinoderms. All are living freely in the aquatic habitat or in marine environment and feeding on the crustaceans and small fish larvae. Now the symmetry. These, these animals show unique symmetry. In case of the Echinoderms, the larva show bilateral symmetry. Bilateral symmetry is shown by the larva. Therefore, this larva is also called as bipinaria larva. The adults show radial symmetry. So this is distinct feature of the Echinoderms which is different from the rest of the phyla. But if we consider the starfish, so it is aquatic marine animal belonging to the phylum Echinodermata. It, it has a central disc from which the tubular arms are arising from. These tubular arms are called tube feet. So these are the tube feet and this is central disc. There are five tube feet in the starfish and are connected to the central disc and they have remarkable power of regeneration. For example, if there is a small fragment of the tube feet of starfish along with the small fragment of central disc, these small fragments are capable to constitute the whole entire organism, the starfish. They bear distinct oral and aboral surface on the disc. For example, in case of starfish, the oral and aboral surface are present on the disc on both surfaces, the dorsal and ventral surface. Oral means mouth and aboral means anus. So, the echinoderms may be found in different shapes. For example, these may be elongated, for example, in sea cucumber. These may be star-like, for example, in starfish. Or these may be spherical or round in case of sea urchins. I am going to write their shapes. These may be elongated, cylindrical, are star like elongated or sea cucumber, cylindrical or spherical or sea urchin, and star like is the starfish. Next is food of echinoderms. So, echinoderms are all carnivorous animals and they feed on the crustaceans, the crabs, the, the larvae of the small fish. So, this is the feeding mode of the phylum echinodermata that these are all free living and feed on the small fish or larvae or aquatic animals. Next is the water vascular system of the echinoderms. It is feeding a nutritive behavior of the echinoderms in, in which they eat away and digest their prey. Next is digestive system. They have complete digestive system in which both mouth and anus are present. Mouth is called oral surface and anus is called aboral surface and these are present on the disc like structure lying distinct or opposite to each other. The oral surface is called mouth and aboral surface is called the anus. Moreover, they have short and coiled elementary canal. Short and coiled elementary canal and it bears 10 pairs of pyloric sicae. This pair pyloric sicae helps in the digestion of food. Next is the tube feet. These tube feet are multidimensional and perform various functions. For example, these tube feet capture the prey. These have papules for respiration. These, these tube feet help in locomotion. These tube feet have suckers for feeding. So these are different functions performed by the tube feet of the echinoderms. Next is the respiration. So these bear different respiratory organs. In case of the starfish, starfish respires through papules which are attached to the tube feet. Brittle star, it respires through genital bursa. There are different organs of respiration in case of echinoderms. These are the papules, gills and genital bursa. Next is the nervous system. Echinoderms have poor nervous system. They have a radial ganglia. The radial ganglia is surrounds the pharynx in case of the echinoderms and nerves are arising from this radial ganglia. These are called nerve cords. So the echinoderms bear poor nerve system having radial ganglia which surround the pharynx from which the nerves are arising which control the whole body part. Next is the reproduction or reproductive system. The echinoderms show both modes of reproduction. In case of asexual reproduction, these have remarkable power of regeneration 
For example, in the case of starfish, a small fragment of the tube feed along with a small fragment of central disc is capable to constitute another starfish. So these have asexual mode of reproduction in the form of regeneration. Moreover, most often they perform sexual reproduction in which the sexes are separate. Fertilization is external. Their larva is called bipinarial larva because it shows the bilateral symmetry. Therefore, this larva is called bipinarial larva. It is the circulatory system, must don't show the well developed circulatory system. However, there is open circulatory system present for the transportation. Next is the excretory system. These animals also lack a specialized excretory system, and the excretory cells amoebocytes are present in the siloam. The excretory cells in case of echinoderms are called amoebocytes. These are present in the siloam and collect waste from the body and then remove these waste from the body. Amoebocytes are the excretory organs or excretory cells in case of the echinoderm. Next is the reproductive behavior. Most of the echinoderms are oviparous. For example, the starfish, sea urchin, sea cucumber, sea lilies, brittle star. These are all oviparous. The viviparous echinoderms are also present. For example, the sea star, cryptosternia, this is a viviparous. Viviparous means that they don't lay their eggs, rather they give birth to their young ones. So next is the metamorphosis. As we have stated that they have bipinarial larva which show bilateral symmetry. Which means that larva stage is present in case of echinoderms. Hatchling does not resemble the adults. Rather, it undergoes certain morphological changes to attain the shape of the adult. This whole process of development from the fertilization of egg till development of the adult is called metamorphosis. So these animals show metamorphosis. Next is their defensive behavior. So defense mode or defensive behavior is also shown by the condoms to escape from the predator. This is called autotomy. Auto means self and tomy means to cut. So in some cases when these animals are endangered, these animals shed away their arms to confuse their predator and to escape from the predator and safeguard themselves. So this process is called autotomy in which they shed away their part to confuse the predator. Now here we will discuss the distinction of the phylum echinodermator from rest of the phylum of the invertebrates and similarities to the echinodermates or hemichordates that evolution of the vertebrates from invertebrates. So these were the basis of evolution from invertebrates to vertebrates. Basis of evolution from invertebrates to vertebrates was provided by the phylum echinodermata and these are just due to their unique characteristics. So the phylum echinodermata bear distinctions and unique characteristics which do not resemble or match with the rest of the phylum of the invertebrates. For example, these are all marine, these are all free living, having no parasitic member and they show the unique symmetry in which the larva is bilaterally symmetrical and adults are radial symmetrical. These are the three characteristics of phylum echinodermata which are different from the rest of the phylum of invertebrates. So these distinctions are from invertebrates and similarities are towards the cardates or vertebrates. So they show three similarities to the cardiates or vertebrates. These are their bipinarial larva is just like the tornaria larva of hemicardates. In the shape, the symmetry. Next, the embryonic development of the echinoderms is just like the cardiates. They show the same mode of development from the embryo. The ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm develop the same organs just like the cardiates. Creatinine phosphate. Creatinine phosphate is high energy molecule present in the muscles of cardiates or vertebrates. And it is also found in the muscles of the Echinoderms. So these are the three characters which are similar to the cardates and hemicardates and thus these distinctions and similarities toward the cardates led the evolution from the invertebrates to the vertebrates. So the phylum echinodermata has a significant role in the process of evolution. Now we will discuss the economical importance of the echinoderms. Some echinoderms are used as food for example sea cucumber. Sea cucumber is a marine animal belonging to the phylum echinodermata which is used as food in Europe. Next, the eggs of starfish and sea urchin are eaten in West Indies. So, West Indians eat the eggs of the starfish and sea urchin. Next is their dried skeleton. Skeleton of the dried echinoderms is dried and it is used as fertilizer in the field because it has high content of calcium and nitrogen. Calcium and nitrogen content, their skeleton is dried off and it is used in the fields as a fertilizer. The stinging sea urchins. These sea urchins which are stinging are poisonous and harmful to the other animals and human populations. Starfish is a scavenger. It's also called as sea water cleaner. So in this lecture we have discussed the general characteristics of the phylum Echinodermata, their examples, their distinctions from rest of the phyla and their similarities to the cardates and hemicardates leading to the basis of evolution from invertebrates to the vertebrates. So this was all about the phylum echinodermata. It is basically the basis of evolution from invertebrates to the vertebrates. Hope you have learnt a lot in this lecture. Thank you.